no see on uh, fear in the lower fort and we are looking at the lower fort with the angle of our study we will see that at uh, numerous places there are water channels like this there are water channels like this some are in good shape and some are in very bad shape and in the, most of the cases of the mogul buildings for example if you go to the tomb of jahangir and you just climb the boundary wall you will just see that the boundary wall is not just a boundary wall there is a canal running on the boundary wall and that that canal canal was supplying water to the whole of the jahangir fort so that was a system of supplying water to these the lawns why the canal was at a higher level because uh, due to the flow of the water from a higher level the the fountains could run properly and when is when i say fountains could run properly the fountains never run as they run today i mean they are rising to a height of 10 15 20 30 even 40 feet in our buildings or monument no not like that the mughal fountains just came out of the 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 what is the nozzle and this rose to a level of 1 or 2 feet maximum that's all and then just fell down around itself in a basin and from the basin the water was discharged so the idea was not the to enjoy the glory of these uh, fountains the idea was quite different the idea was to listen to the sound of the water now is the sound of that water so important that is yet another question which will come under our study today is the sound of water important or the water itself is important or the and odor jo khushboo hai uski wo important hai what is the is beside the the use of water because that is our lifeline without water we cannot survive without water plant plants cannot survive and without water animals cannot survive in fact without water nobody can survive nothing can survive so that is the different function but beside the, those function the water has many other aesthetic qualities also and that should be in our study today so this is a huge well outside the, the shahi masjid of the lahore fort and this is the shape of the fort so and the water was taken out and this water was then taken out to a higher level and particularly i saw a duct at the top of the boundary wall which encircles the mosque of the lahore fort the boundary wall ke upar jo deewar boundary wall jo hai uske upar bhi ek canal bani hui hai which was for the sake of supplying water with a pressure to the building of for the wuzu khana of the mosque now there is a, this map uh, which is quite a relevant mosque mosque uh, sir relevant map and a very good drawing also done by one of our very good friend dr mehmood hussain who used to be the head of architecture department at uet i don't know where he is today but he carried out the study and he drew quite a few maps of the lower fort and many other monuments also now what i have time to tell you in this little diagram this is the musamman burj or a part of the musamman burj this area or this veranda is known as the shish mahal today over here is the nalakka pavilion and this is the courtyard in front of the shish mahal in the middle of this courtyard there is a pond initially the pond is square then in the middle the it is a circular depth then in the circular depth there is a platform and then on this side of the platform that is on the southern side of the platform there is a bridge you can call it a gangway or so and then uh, over here we see a canal traveling from here and taking the water into this pond but the question is how the the water was coming to this place the water was coming to this place by virtue of a pulley system which was supplying water to this area of the lower fort now this fort this area of the lower fort had now disappeared so the water was taken out either from the the wall or either from the duct which was at the top of the wall or from sometime from the river and cleaned and then poured into this you know this duct this duct is traveling from this place and traveling on the wall going this way then this way 
and then it is traveling throughout like this. Sorry. It uh, traveling, the, the duct is traveling here, the water comes here and comes here and comes to this place. It is at the top of the wall. Now the, coming here, it falls in a, in a small offshore into a pond, very small pond here. You can just call it a trough, not a pond, but a trough, or just a basin. The water falls into this basin. And when the basin is full, then the water overflows into this canal. And then it goes to the, this area is sometimes covered and sometimes not covered. When it reaches here, it goes underground. I mean, it goes under the, under this bridge. It goes under this bridge and then fills the pond with the water. Now there is this, there can be a question from you. Why there is a platform in the middle of this pond? What is the purpose of having a platform? in the middle of this pond. And you will see, <clears throat> in most cases, wherever the Mughal built their monuments and built their gardens, there was always a platform in the middle of a garden. For example, if you go to Shalamar Bal, you will see that in the middle, middle of the main pond, there is a platform and it is connected on both sides by a bridge. But actually, when the Mughal built this uh, Shalamar garden and they constructed this platform in the middle of that huge pond, there was no bridges connecting it to the sides. These bridges were constructed by Ranjit Singh. And the clear proof of this is that uh, some of the fountain heads, uh, they came under these bridges also. So ye toh nahi sakta ki uske the Shah Jahan ne banaya hai. To fountain head pool ke nii, us bridges ke niche bhi bana deta hai, itna toh beekuf nahi tha. So obviously there was no connection of the platform with the sides. Now, when I say that the, these uh, central platforms in the middle of the pools had no connection to the sides, then another question arises, then what, is the what was the purpose of this platform in the middle of these ponds and who are using these ponds and for what purpose? So that is an important question. Do you have any idea why these platforms in the middle of ponds were built when they were not connected to the sides? Sir, Rux Kelly. So Sir, musicians Kelly. You are right, but then I, 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 your question answer is exactly right. There, there was a musician and the dancer. I think I said there must be some method of reaching there. So the answer is simple. They were. Uh, moved from the sides of these these buildings. For example, if you look at if you look at this drawing as is the let's say suppose this is Shalamarba and this is the platform in the middle and now there is no bridge here. So the, the dancers and the musicians were taken on a plank win they were carried to this platform. And after the function was over they were brought back carrying on the shoulder of the workers. So that was the method. Uh, which was very common. Now the purpose was when the emperor is uh, emperor is sitting in the Shish Mahal with the family or the member of the family and the musicians are performing here, so simply enjoying. And these platform was uh, and the music or the, you know, the function of this platform by musicians and the dancer and this, uh, people like that. Such function were always held uh, during the moonlit night. Chandni Rato mein ye se function hote the. And that is why these platforms which are standing in the middle of these pools are always known as Chandani. In Kanami Chandani Padgya, because they were always used during the mid moonlit nights. So this is the Chandani of the Shish Mahal, which we see here. So the, my point was that the water is traveling from the reservoir from here on this wall to this place, and then coming over here and falling into an Apsha at this place. And we we'll see this place also. And that is the little bridge which is going to the Chandni. This is the Chandni. And this is a square pond. And within this square pond, this is the circular pond. And this uh, Chandni was actually standing on four legs. Otherwise, it has four legs. One here, one here, and one here, and one here at the four corners. At the bottom, it was just a piece of the, this pond. 
So this is the bridge to carry the people to this platform. Now when the water was full in these ponds, the water overflowed into these ducts or channel. Either we chale gaye, the one toward the Naulaka and this one toward the Atgara of the Lahore fort. And the supply was coming from this direction. So that was the system of supplying water to this place. Now when I say the water was going, overflowing water was going in these channels over here and over here and over here. Where the water was going, was it going directly back to the river or was it going somewhere else? Sir, the living quarters are going to go to the water. Bilkul aapne sahi ka, this much area which we see here, this is all, all solid at the bottom. You can surrounding this area, there are various chambers. Now water which was going from here, that was going down to those chambers. And in each of those chambers, there was another offshore. So this uh, water was appearing in almost all rooms at the bottom of this platform. We see those slides also. So in this picture, we again see those uh, outgoing channels here and an outgoing channel here. And the poor channel is here. This is the Naulaka. And on the two sides of the Naulaka, there are uh, two pavilions like this and one pavilion like this. These are known as the Hava Mahals. And the water is coming from this wall going to this area and then falling down from here into the offshore over here. And that trough or the basin, which I told you, is somewhere in this area. This is another picture and shows the distribution of water in four different directions. This is a detailed drawing of the central pool. You can see this all Petra Dura work. And I hope you remember what Petra Dura is. Petra Dura, what is the Petra Dura? This is a repeating pattern. Or that is different. That is a rectal geometry, fractal geometry, fractal geometry. That's different. Okay. Petra Dura is an Italian terminology, and Petra. If you see, the Petra is like this. So we have stone work. Yes, work. Petra. Petra means stone, and Dura means very hard. Both these words are very close to us. Petra say, I'm never terminal. And Dura say, durability, which means strength. So Petra Dura simply means a work with strong stones. But the original Petra Dura work, which was done in Lahore Fort, for example, in this place, was with the help of very expensive stones. So the work is stone But some of the stone had been so strongly embedded. But then in the process of stealing those stones, they damage the building also. So if you look at the Chandani, the sides of the stone in bed, the This is the canal which I was showing you in the map of Mahmoud Hussain. This, this is the water channel which is running on this building. This is the Atlakara building at the bottom. Now, what is the Rath Dara? Rath Dara is that there is a five, five opening on this side and three opening this side. So that means five plus three, eight. So the just say, I'm Baradari Katayam, is Kachuki Atharwazayan, it became known as Rath Dara. And in Lahore, we, we have another building which has three opening that is known as Sadara. So this is very simple to understand. So this is the roof of the Rath Dara, and the water is traveling from here to this place and then over here, and then above this wall and falling into the this veranda over here. And this map shows you, this is the offshore in that veranda, which I showed you in the previous building. This offshore is over here in this area. That is the drawing of that offshore. And this is the little trough behind, behind below this. So water comes from above and falls into this. This is the plan of this little trough. The water falls into this. So you can now understand the water is coming from here to here and here and then moving here and falling here and then from here traveling to the pool and then going into three directions when the pool is full. And this is that option in the veranda. Now you can see the zigzag pattern on this. 
Now, when we look at these uh, apshars, either the apshars have some carvings on them, or uh, either or the apshars have no carving on them. So there were well, there are two types of these apshars, or the water shoots are in Kerala. Kai naam hai inke water shoots, C H U T E. Uska matlab bhi apshar hai. Waterfall is another name. Apshar is another name. So ki koi kuch bhi ap Kerala. Sometimes they were just smooth surface, and sometimes they were the carved surfaces. And in both cases, they served some purpose. When they were carved, they had a purpose of carving, and when they were smooth, they had a purpose of carving, smoothness. And when uh, when they were smooth, at least they had some kind of decoration. And this decoration is just an uh, indication of the showing the flow of water downward. So this is known as a zigzag pattern. But technically, as a student of architecture, or as as an architect, this design is known as chevron design. C H E V R O N, C H E V R O N. Zigzag to a common man ki language is a chevron is the language of the architect. So this is the pond below. So when the pond was full, then underground the roof of the veranda, it flowed to that channel which we have seen in the previous drawing. So this is the apsha, and this is the trough over here. So the canal which takes water to the central pool, the canal has a chevron. Chevron or chevron is spelling a different. The pattern inlaid with variegated stone. So this is the pattern which is inlaid with variegated stone over here, and this is again to refresh your mind and just to memorize, tell you that how the water travels from here and then here and then to this point. And this is the passage, which is uh, halfway open, and that is when it, the canal, when uh, when this canal reaches the brim of the central pond, then uh, it goes underground, and then the bridge starts from here, so that the people, or the workers, or the dancers, or the performers can move to the chandni. So this is the process. How from the top of the wall, water came to this canal. 